We're gathering with you tonight with very short advance notice because there's been a firestorm of media interest in the award by the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services of a contract to farm share. Now it's understandable that Feeding South Florida, which held the contract, is not happy that it did not win. But it is very common in state, local, and federal government contracting for there be a change in providers. And when that change happens, the losers are often very upset. There is a well-established process to protest such awards, and I'm fairly sure that Feeding South Florida is availing itself of that process to go through the process of protesting. But what's happening here since this award was announced is an orchestrated campaign by Feeding South Florida, not only to undermine the award by the State Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, but to try and besmirch the proud brand, reputation, and track record of farm share. Now these are organizations that work in the same space and not unlike children's advocacy organizations, arts advocacy organizations, there's overlap in mission. They should be cheering for one another's mission and success. But in this case, the loser, Feeding South Florida, is orchestrating a campaign of misinformation and stepping all over the facts and the truth. And in that effort, they have involved the news media, which is why we're gathered tonight, the public and policymakers in a campaign intended to undo this contract that was awarded through a meritorious process of fair and equal evaluation. So Stephen Shelley, the CEO of FarmShare, is going to set the record straight. And as a former reporter, I'm happy that we've been able to put together this opportunity for you South Florida media folks to get it right. The longest running feature in any newspaper is the corrections column. And isn't it better to get it right so you don't have to correct a record that is wrong on the facts and the truth? So Mr. Shelley is now gonna take you through point by point a fact and truth-based rebuttal of information distributed to many of you today or recently by Feeding South Florida. Stephen. Perfect, thank you very much. First, I wanna thank everybody that's in attendance. I know it was very short notice and, and I thank you guys for at such a late hour, you know, tuning in here to learn more about what's going on here and get the facts directly from FarmShare and ask any questions you might have of us about the process so that I can get them answered. I think Ron did a good job of summarizing you know, what farm share is all about. So I'm not going to take any additional time because I know that, that your time is valuable. Go Stephen, ahead, Ron. One second. For the, for the press friends that are on this call, when Stephen finishes his brief presentation, please enter any questions you have into the Q&A function. You're all familiar with it in this COVID period of so many virtual events like this. And I will present them uh, as appropriate to Stephen to answer. Okay, go ahead, Stephen. Perfect. Yeah, just a couple of quick comments on the front side. Just FarmShare is probably the largest or is the largest independent food bank in Florida. We're the third largest independent food bank in the United States. We've been in operation for 30 years. We've administered this TFAT program for more than 25 years. We're very experienced in how this process works. We fed major metropolitan uh, cities, counties across the entire state of Florida. Uh, this is something that we do and we do very, very well. Uh, we have no issues delivering food products to people in need. And last year, as Ron mentioned, during the pandemic, nearly 180 million pounds of food, we were able to move through our warehouse system uh, from essentially Panama City all the way down to Key West. And so I did want to take a chance to kind of go through some of these allegations. I understand the correspondence from Feeding South Florida in which they have made certain allegations. And really, these are the allegations that they made in their petition originally uh, to FDAX after these awards were, were given out. And so I'll run through each of them. Um, as briefly as I possibly can, although it may take a little while to get through some of the details. So the first allegation they make is essentially that FarmShare represented its statewide resources as resources available to every region. It goes without saying that resources cannot be used simultaneously in all regions. FarmShare failed to identify its capacity for each specific region and the department's evaluation of FarmShare's statewide capacity as representing its capacity in every region is clearly erroneous. And now they just essentially go through what would be the legal standard. I won't read that every single time. Um, but essentially in this particular case, uh, FarmShare is a statewide organization. We have seven warehouses across the entire state of Florida. We're constantly moving food back and forth between all of our warehouses, again, to make sure that when there's a plethora of food in one region and a, and a def deficit of food in another region, we're constantly moving that food between our warehouses. That's something that FarmShare has unique to us that many other food banks don't have. Most of the other food banks are regional in nature. And so therefore they don't have the resources or the access to be able to ship food 
when produce is prevalent in North Florida and to ship that food down to South Florida to make sure that none of the shelves go empty on any of our warehouses. Our fleet of trucks are constantly also moving from one place to another. It's frequent that we send trucks from South Florida all the way to Quincy and, and Northwest Florida, and then from Jacksonville all the way south to, to Homestead, uh, and even down into the Keys and Key West. You know, our seven warehouses are located, and there's two in Miami-Dade County in Florida City and Homestead. There's one in Pompano. There's one in West Palm Beach. We have one in Palatka, one in Jacksonville, and one in Quincy. And again, those resources are used statewide to constantly move uh, product around. Nowhere in the RFA, which is the request for application that was put out by the Florida Department of Agriculture, does it require that the warehousing facilities be located in the region in which the, um, the applicant is applying for. And so in this case, there's no requirement that farm share have a minimum number of warehouse space within a particular region. And in fact, knowing from our experience, you're able to store TFAT foods in any warehouse in which you have access to and move that product from one region to another um, as needed. And so that again is how FarmShare proposed our, our application. That's how we gave the information to FDAX. It also states in here that FarmShare failed to identify its capacity for each specific region. That's also incorrect. So within our request for application, FarmShare specifically lists all of our warehouses and where those warehouses are located as well as, as well as the capacity for each one of those warehouses and clearly lets the evaluator of the application know what our skill set is and what our capacity is in particular region as well as each region's application we specifically list the warehouse that will be serving that particular region so again although farm share provided its statewide access and statewide resources because we use that entire resource to serve every region that we've been awarded it also did provide a regional list of what those warehouses would be so that the evaluator knew which warehouse would be the main distribution point, even though we might restock that warehouse from other warehouses we had nearby. Uh, another thing I think it's key to mention here, specifically as it relates to, relates to Broward County, although Broward County probably has one of our smallest distribution centers, we are currently uh, sitting on my desk is actually a lease for a 28,000 square foot warehouse in Broward County. As soon as the award for that contract is signed by all parties, I will be entering into that lease and we will have an additional warehousing space in Broward County. There's a 23,000 square foot warehouse as well that I'm currently in the process of leasing in uh, Palm Beach County. So although our capacity was sufficient where we currently had, we're buffering and increasing that capacity to make sure that we can fully fulfill all of these contracts. I've also got under contract an additional four trucks, uh, refrigerated box trucks, an additional semi truck, so again, to make sure that we have um, more than enough assets in order to make sure that we can serve every region in which we have been awarded under the Department of uh, Agriculture. Stephen, a quick question. Yes. Um, in farm share submission for this work, did we win every region for food service distribution that we applied for? No, we, we did not. We applied for 10 regions across the state of Florida based on what I thought our capacity as a food bank could handle and what we thought we could administer based on logistical supply chains. And of those 10, we were awarded six of those uh, that we, we applied for. And in two regions, we actually had been administering, um, we were not renewed for. So we gained some regions that were new to us. A key parallel question, are we protesting those four regions that we didn't win, including two that we were the provider for, the incumbent who did not get renewed? We are not protesting those uh, regions. No, we're not. We, we, we acknowledge that the Department of Agriculture has undergone a fair and impartial process. They've used five evaluators who have knowledge about the TFAP program and what is necessary to properly administer this TFAP program. And ultimately, we respect the decision by the Florida Department of Agriculture. And has FarmShare in its 30 years ever engaged in a campaign to undermine a peer organization working in the same space as is happening here? No, we have not. I mean, FarmShare is an organization that puts its head down and it carries out its mission and it does its mission well. And as a result of it carrying out a, its mission and, and performing the task that it was formed and created to perform, we, we have potentially, um, you know, gained market share, I guess, so to speak, and as far as these regions go. But the reason we've gained that market share is because we're doing a good job. It's because we're feeding people in times of need. All right. Please go back to the point by point rebuttal, sir. Sure, so the next one is allegation number two. And so allegation number two says, um, further the evaluation criteria provide that preference will be given for an online ordering system, an electronic warehouse management system. FarmShare represented that it has an electronic inventory database, but FarmShare 
does not have an online ordering system or electronic warehouse management system, and its response fails to indicate any plans to acquire such systems. The department's evaluation of FarmShare's use of an electronic inventory database is meeting the preference for an online ordering system and electronic warehouse management system is clearly erroneous back to the legal standard. So what I would say on this particular item is FarmShare has a very robust inventory database management system. And so what, where I think the issue here is, is that a lot of times when you think of an automated ordering system, you're thinking of, uh, in the food banking world, you're thinking of agencies that are getting online, they're going to an online portal, a website, and they're making an order for food. They're saying, I, I need X number of cases for, for this, that, or the other um, for my, my food pantry. But when you look at the RFA, everything prior to, it says, it says automatic ordering system, but all the sentences that precede everything related to an online ordering system discuss inventory, receiving a truck, tracking a truck, tracking the, tracking the product that comes in from a truck, where is it stored, what's in your inventory, where did that food go to, uh, what agency received it, when did that agency distribute that food, and then so as part of also the question answer period of this RFA, there was a question specifically asked that says, uh, can you provide more information or better defined as envisioned as an automated ordering system? FDAX answered, preference will be given to applicants that use an automated ordering system which tracks all aspects of PFAP inventory status controls that are computerized to ensure PFAP foods are distributed in a timely manner. FarmShare's database does all of that. FarmShare's database is specifically created to track and monitor inventory. And so this automated ordering system and what FDAX was asking for was everything related to inventory. My answer in my application is a page long, clearly defining and describing what my inventory tracking system looks like, what it's capable of doing, and what it's able to accomplish. And that's what ultimately the evaluators looked at, received, and scored FarmShare's application on. Next point. Yeah, next point. Sorry, I got to flip the page here. Yeah. It's pretty voluminous, if I understand. Yeah, sorry about that. So allegation three. Uh, the evaluation criteria further provide that preference will be given for auto monitor cold storage capacity and systems with security protocols. FarmShare represented that it uses auto monitoring for cold storage, but FarmShare makes substantial use of container units for cold storage, which units are not indicated to be auto monitored and are susceptible to pest, theft, and destruction. The department's evaluation of FarmShare's capacity as meeting the preference for cold storage is erroneous. So again, in this particular case, FarmShare uses containerized cooler and freezer units primarily because of its modulation, its modular form, meaning that I can, I can have 20 of those units and they can all be freezers, they can all be refrigerators, and it allows me as much flexibility as possible as I'm receiving donations of unique products because you never know how much of the product you're going to get when donations arrive. And so being able to change from cooler to freezer space uh, on a moment's notice just by switching a dial is, is very beneficial. It also should be pointed out these cooler freezer units are the same exact cooler freezer units that are used to ship uh, perishable food products across on the oceans. And so the Chiquita banana, uh, some of the, the overseas uh, farm producers, they're using these same exact cooler freezer units to maintain food integrity, to also defend that food from pests and other things. And so the, these containerized freezer units are, are very uh, beneficial in their use of food banking activities. Each one of those has been equipped. So FarmShare has a remote monitoring system that's made by Wi-Fi or, or tied into Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. It's placed inside the unit right near the doorway of the containerized unit, uh, freezer or cooler unit. It's set, there's alarms that are set so that in the event that the temperature rises to a level in which we've been set to trigger that alarm, it automatically sends a text message and an email to staff that lets them know that it's exceeded a safety threshold and staff immediately responds to figure out why and, and move the food if the food needs to be moved to another unit um, to make sure that the food integrity remains intact. The other benefit of these sensors is that because they're placed near the front of the door, ultimately the, uh, if it's open, it shows a spike in the temperature. So it also prevents against theft. If someone to, uh, without authorization were to open that cooler freezer unit, that same email and text message system would also send a unit to my, my staff to let them know that somebody has opened that. And if no one was authorized to open that, it again, it allows us to then monitor any theft of the product. And that's important here in the TFAP, uh, TFAP arena to make sure that everything is, is maintained and the integrity is maintained. So clearly also within my RFA, there is a bold, titled area that talks about remote sensors. It states exactly what I just told you, although in a summarized form. Uh, so clearly the evaluators had access to this information. They read this information and they scored FarmShare accordingly. Allegation four, 
With regard to transportation, FarmShare indicates it has 55 vehicles. However, they have 15 trailers and 10 tractors that they report as 25 units. In reality, this represents 10 units at most. When viewed correctly, FarmShare has only 29 vehicles throughout the entire state, and there is no indication of how many of those vehicles will be deployed or available in any particular region. Again, as stated in the first uh, application portion of it, this particular section does not require, uh, as part of the RFA process, to identify a truck home location and whether or not that vehicle will be uh, permanently maintained in a particular region. And again, FarmShare doesn't operate that way. We're constantly moving vehicles between regions as demand dictates, as we need to move more food into one region or that one region is more severely affected, such as during times of natural disasters, we may assimilate a large number of our fleet in one particular location to make sure that we have substantial assets and resources to move food in and out as quickly as possible. Uh, additionally, the farm share, it's part of its RFA, specifically delineated exactly the type of vehicles that it has. So it had a subheading which said vehicles. It then lists the number of trailers, the number of tractors, the number of refrigerated box trucks, the number of vans, the number of trucks, uh, so that the evaluator of this RFA clearly had all the information. They were able to evaluate that information and determine whether it met their criteria and score us accordingly. The other thing to point out is that uh, when it comes to the trailers and the tractors, so one of the things we did during um, this pandemic is we needed larger numbers of trucks and trailers in order to move the food in and out as fast as possible. So we were able to rent additional tractors to pair up with these trailers. So at any time, these 15 trailers, although their allegations are they are not full, fully operational vehicles, they can become fully operational vehicles at any time because I'm able to lease a tractor to match up with that trailer and I can turn that into 25 when needed, when the demand requires it or the food supply or the food flow requires me to maximize those trailers and turn them into fully functional trucks. So therefore the information provided was accurate and the evaluators had all the information they need in order to determine uh, this proper scoring for farm share. Allegation five says farm share proposes a joint agreement with Palm Beach County Food Bank and relies upon its resources in support of its response and violation of the requirements of procurement. First off, nowhere in farm shares RFA does it list Palm Beach County's capabilities, its warehousing space, its cooler space, its freezer space as part of farm shares application for Palm Beach County. All it does within our application, it mentions that Palm Beach County Food Bank and FarmShare have been have had a partnership and a relationship in the past, and that we look forward to essentially working together to feed Palm Beach County, but nowhere does it, uh, as the evaluator pointed to or provided information which would allow for them to uh, impute Palm Beach County's food bank's ability to FarmShare's ability. And in fact, FarmShare's um, proposal in its RFA for Palm Beach County, similar to Broward County, is that it has sufficient warehouses within South Florida. It has right now four warehouses within South Florida, uh, within 56 miles of Broward County Center and a little bit farther away from uh, Palm Beach County Center. But ultimately, we essentially utilize it to almost like stocking the store shelves where the food, the bulk of the food will be stored in one of our other ancillary warehouses as the smaller warehouses in both Palm Beach County and Broward County uh, begin to run lower on food supply. We send one of our semi trucks, box trucks, or a combination of the two to restock that warehouse so that the agencies can pick up from that warehouse uh, whenever they're needed and as needed. And so essentially the food will never run dry because of this system. That's how I proposed it in the RFA to the Florida Department of Ag. Um, it did not rely on and did not include Palm Beach County Food Bank as a, um, as a specific partner as part of my application process. Those were the main allegations that were contained in the petition that Feeding South Florida had filed with the Florida Department of Agriculture and ultimately subject to the legal arena. There's a few others that I believe some of you may have received by email that I may just mention in, in brief and you guys can ask additional questions if you have them. Um, one couple of my, I already kind of addressed dealing with our facilities. I guess they're making allegations. We only have two facilities in South Florida. Again, we have two in Miami-Dade County in Florida City and Homestead, one in Pompano and one in Palm Beach County. So again, that statement is completely uh, erroneous. It's completely false. We have four facilities. And again, as mentioned, we're in the process of leasing two additional facilities, one for sure in Broward County and, and highly likely to possibly release another one in Palm Steve, Beach, we have six facilities. Stephen, thanks very much. Before we go to our, our questions from the news media and uh, media friends, please cue them up in the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. I wanted to first ask you to differentiate uh, your operational model at FarmShare 
from that of other uh, food service programs in this space in terms of in, in farm share nobody pays who we serve is that correct that's correct. Yeah, farm share. You know, some some organizations have what they call a shared maintenance fee, and so they're charging the agencies to essentially store, transport, and possibly deliver food to those agencies. A lot of times, there's a delivery fee that's charged on top of the shared maintenance fee for various uh, specific food products. Farm share has never had that model. Farm share provides all of its food to agencies and end recipients free of charge. We don't have delivery fees. Um, we do deliver to agencies depending on the model and the area in which we're in. Some of them pick up directly from us. A lot of them we do deliver to, especially in Northeast Florida, where you have a much more rural and spread out agency network. And we don't charge any fees whatsoever to deliver that food to those agencies. All right, thank you. The first question is from Steve Bosquet from the South Florida Sun Sentinel and quoting it exactly. Broward Mayor Steve Geller said today that Nikki Free told him she will quote, personally review unquote, the scoring next week and reevaluate the award. What is your response? I mean, I think, I think ultimately we want, we want them to get it right. I, I think that her staff has, has done their review. They've done their analysis. This has been through a litigation process. My understanding is it has been triple checked or even quadruple checked uh, to make sure that the scoring was correct, that the evaluators did not miss anything, that it's been signed off on multiple um, places. And so I, I encourage the agricultural commissioner to verify all of that. I think she has a responsibility to do that. And so I support her efforts to get the answer right. But at the end of the day, I believe her staff has performed a proper and impartial review of all of the items. And I expect the scoring to remain the same. All right. And uh, that's the only question that's been queued up. I'll wait a minute to see if any of our other media friends want to put a question in the Q&A function. But I want to go back to this. It is not uncommon in procurement in federal, state, and local government for the loser of a submission to properly protest through an established process. And we're fairly sure that Feeding South Florida is pursuing that process. But the reason we're on this call tonight is because of an orchestrated campaign they've engaged in publicly to undermine the award in the court of public opinion. And in doing that, they are twisting the facts and the truth, which means misrepresenting the facts and the truth and duping our friends in the news media into being agents in their arguments uh, as opposed to following the process. And so too, are they feeding fear to a public that's worried about the food supply for hungry people in Broward County because of this award and public policymakers are being engaged in that same orchestrated campaign. It's wrong, it's not based on facts and truth. Yeah, and Brian, I'd, I'd like to just kind of chime in there because that's one of the things I think that, that I'm most concerned about, and that is dealing with the, the misleading information about the fact that uh, potentially the food is being shut off to Broward County or that somehow the change in administrators of this contract will ultimately affect the food supply. And I think that that answer is, is it won't. Regardless of who is administering this contract, the USDA uh, provides this particular food product. The volume and the level of food that's coming through that program to the administrator of the program will be the same. And so I think it's, it's disingenuous to imply that somehow a change in the operator will ultimately change the food supply. And I think it's also, it incites fear and, and concern. There's a lot of people that do rely on this food, you know, to feed their families, especially during these times of pandemics. And, and ultimately they become very frightened that somehow they're going to lose their food. And, and I think that that causes a lot of anxiety and stress on, on the people that rely on this food. And so I, I do think it's important to correct that record that no, the food supply will not change um, regardless of who administers this contract. And it's understandable that uh, folks in Broward County who care about feeding South Florida and respect it, as we do at Farm Share, Stephen, uh, would be concerned that they did not win renewal of this contract. That's not uncommon. What is uncommon is an orchestrated campaign to undermine a legitimate award based on a fair, equitable process. And there is a protest process also established, but this public campaign to undermine this award in the court of public opinion is using the press, the public and policymakers to try and throw pressure on the Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services over a process that they engaged in that was legitimate and in which you did not prevail in four regions of the state that you sought to represent, is that correct? Yes, yeah, correct. We had four that we were not selected for. And, but again, we respect the process. We know that it was done diligently. We know that the Florida Department of Agriculture takes pride in, in, in making sure it's a fair and balanced process. And they had experts that weighed in and were able to evaluate all of the applications that were provided to them. And we respect that process. 
So we ask our friends in the media, since there are no more questions that have been filed in the Q&A function, but I'll talk for another minute or less in case someone wants to queue one up, to please balance out the coverage that you are planning to do tonight. Ron, there is another question. With this? There is okay. another question. Okay. All right, from Steve Bosquet also with South Florida Sun Sentinel. The assertion by Feeding South Florida that there were quote errors unquote in scoring, particularly that farm share received a higher score in some categories when both applicants had the same number of excellent grades. Response to that, sir? Uh, yeah, I mean, that, I think that is unfortunately more of a response for, for those, those that scored it because I haven't had a chance to go side by side to look at where our scores were versus where their scores were. Uh, but I think what you'll also find is a lot of the allegations that were made by Feeding South Florida, I just went through, you know, the five main ones that they asserted, and none of them have any merit. None of them are valid. None of them are accurate. And so I think, you know, their assertion that there were errors made, um, you know, doesn't necessarily um, hold a lot of water, given the fact that some of the other allegations they made also don't, don't hold up. And I think to, to piggyback on what Ron was saying is that anytime there's a bid protest or bid challenge, the person challenged in the bid has to establish a couple different things. They have to be able to show that the process was flawed, that the evaluators were biased, or that the, sec the first place winner, their application was somehow incorrect, misleading, or ultimately flawed so that they will throw that application out in hopes of becoming the winner of the award. And so that's kind of what Feeding South Florida has engaged in here, the, the classic example of a bid protest or bid challenge by making allegations against the Department of Ag that the process was unfair and wasn't done right, by you know, making claims that the five evaluators may have been biased or were not, did not properly score, they made errors, or that making allegations that uh, farm shares application was flawed in some way, and, and that that's what they're trying to do. And so I guess my long answer to your question is, I, I don't know that there were any errors as much as it is in order for them to prevail and unseat farm share as the number one choice, they're going to have to establish one of those three items. And I think this is their effort to try to do that. And, and Stephen, uh, as we wrap this up, because I think there are no additional questions, although uh, a reporter from the Palm Beach Post has joined late, we'll send him the recording of this entire session. Please address one more time the alarm bell that really was intended to generate hysteria among the public, the press, and public officials about this is going to create a delay and a gap in hungry people getting what they need to survive. Yeah, the answer is it, it's not going to create a gap in services. You know, if the contracts are awarded, we will be able to fulfill those contracts. We have the expertise, we have the experience, we have the resources to make sure that all the regions in which we were awarded will receive their full allotment of food at a level, at least at the same level they are now. But I will tell you that if this challenge process continues to drag on and on, it could ultimately create a gap in services on the back end because there's a time period in which we have to order food in order to have that food delivered by the October 1st contract start date. So the longer we go without a resolution and without these contracts being issued, there is a potential that on the backside, it could cause a gap in services because that food has not been ordered in time and doesn't get delivered in time. And there could be a time period in which food is not available. So that's one reason why it's critical that we get this resolved, get these contracts issued and the food banks can get to work. So I'll say again, whether it's children's advocacy organization, arts organization, or organizations like Feeding South Florida and Farm Share engaged in this noble mission of feeding hungry people. They should be cheering one another's success. Surely they're competitors, but they're also peers. And it's wrong to demonize somebody who beat you in a fair and legitimate process. And I'm asking our friends in the news media to balance out the one-sided uh, broadsides you've received from Feeding South Florida with the facts and truth presented here tonight by Stephen and other information that's been provided to you. Thank you.